Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Smithwick. Um, I recently graduated from the University of Southern California where I finished a dual degree in heritage conservation and urban planning. Um, and this summer I got the opportunity through the IEP program to live and work in Pristina and Prizren, Kosovo. Um, here's a photo, it's also behind me. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Kosovo is a small country in the Central Balkans, you can see it right here. Um, it's landlocked, but it's in a really great location, allowed me a lot of opportunity to travel, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. Um, but before that, I just want to talk a little bit about my placement overview, um, specifically the way the heritage sectors break down in Kosovo. That way you can get a better idea of where I spent my time this summer. So like we have here in the US, there's an executive branch of government, um, which is run by the president and the prime minister. And uh, they govern the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport, which is essentially responsible for enforcing heritage related policies, um, nominating and maintaining heritage assets at the local and national levels. So there are regional centers that do this at the local level through the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport. And then on the other side of it is the legislative branch, which is uh, governed by the Parliamentary Assembly, which is similar to our Congress here. And under that is the Kosovo Council for Cultural Heritage, or the KCCH. And they're responsible for reviewing and assessing heritage nominations, uh, for evaluating and revising applications, making recommendations to the assembly, um, and kind of just making sure that all the heritage assets that we're nominating are um, significant. So these two organizations work very closely together, and I had the opportunity to intern for the KCCH this summer on an evaluation project, which was called the Evaluation of the Historic Center of Prizren. Um, so basically in 2022 last year, the Historic Center of Prizren was nominated for permanent protection by the government. And prior to that, 122 heritage assets in town had been listed under protection in various categories. So for architecture or cultural significance, um, significance to development patterns, et cetera. Um, but there, a lot of these buildings are in poor physical condition. So the government decided it was time to undertake a comprehensive documentation survey led by the KCCH of all the heritage assets in town. So basically a full scale citywide documentation project, which is essentially an urban urban planning project. Um, and part of the goal is to potentially expand the histori historic perimeter of Prizren to include an additional buffer zone and also to determine the eligibility for future UNESCO protection. So the long term goal would be um, for Kosovo to get this city nominated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and so the themes of the IEP internship that this falls within are heritage as a pillar of sustainable development. So how can we continue to uh, conserve these um, historic cities as development pressure increases and also world heritage management in general. So here's a few of those assets that have already been listed. Up here on the hill, we have Prizren Castle, which dates to the sixth century. There's the mosque in town, a Serbian church, and of course the old stone bridge. So our job was really to look at more of these vernacular structures and figure out how uh, they are significant to the context of the historic development patterns in, uh, in Prizren. So the first um, kind of job I had was to look at the maps that were sent to us by the regional center in Prizren. Um, it was my job to look at all of these parcels one by one and make sure they hadn't been subdivided, and if so, to alter the map accordingly using the GIS portal for Kosovo. Um, and then next, I, we broke each of these uh, different areas into zones. Um, this is going to be a multi-year project for uh, the KCCH, so it was important for us to break these different neighborhoods down into zones for um, an easier way to tackle the documentation project. And then the next thing we did was create a, an Excel spreadsheet where we made columns for all of the different data points that we wanted to collect. So things like building condition, number of stories, building typology, um, for example, uh, uh, commercial, residential, mixed use, etc. That way they can have all of these data points moving forward to analyze as the city continues to develop. And then next we made a map of all of the different zones and decided to focus on zone six, which is not so much directly in the historic city center, but a little bit outside. Um, it's still in the in the in the perimeter, but it's more of a mixed use commercial and residential area. Um, we wanted to see kind of how the development has happened uh, over the centuries there. And so here's a couple of maps that we took into the field with us, um, a survey map, and then, of course, an aerial map so we could get a better sense of the building footprints.
And then we went into the field. Um, this was my favorite part. Uh, we spent about two and a half weeks documenting all of the properties in zone six. Um, so you can see here we highlighted them based on their contributing status to the historic uh, significance of the city. Um, we spent a lot of time highlighting on different parcels, taking photos of every single building we saw, um, logging the data. Here's my coworkers Argenda and Betim who went into the field with me. Um, we would take a photo, we would log all the information on an iPad and highlight on a map. Um, we got to talk to a lot of locals about their um, memory of the development in the area. We looked at old building conditions and materials um, and overall had a really fun time in prison in the field. And then afterwards, we came back into the office and logged the additional data that we collected. So we put our photographs into the spreadsheet. Um, we cleaned up the data with all of the information. And then we made some maps. So I made a map of zone six. Um, so you can see here, all of the buildings that are in orange, unfortunately, um, do not retain enough historic integrity to be considered historic um, or a, a contributor to this zone, um, zone's history. And then uh, all of the ones that are in, in yellow are contributors. And then the ones that are in this purpley pink color um, are possible contributors. They're partially historic and might need some more research. And again, this is all based on architecture. So the hope is that our agenda and the team will go back and look at the intangible significance of these structures just to make sure we're not missing anything that would allow it to be a contributor because of its association. Um, so this is just one zone in a giant uh, city that needs to be documented. So we've only done one zone and the hope is that even though, you know, this was uh, mostly non-contributors, we hope that the rest of the city will uh, contribute to that application for a UNESCO World Heritage Site at some point in the future. So I'm really excited to see how the team develops this, how it goes over the next couple of years, and I'm really grateful to have been part of what was essentially Kosovo's first um, national citywide documentation survey project. So as an emerging urban planner, heritage planner, this was a really amazing experience for me to get to be a part of. Um, and just briefly, I wanted to talk a little bit about my life in Kosovo. This was my first time in the Balkans. Um, so I loved walking around living in Pristina, the capital city. Um, you can see here, this was the view from my apartment, which was really cool. I had a great view of the city park. Um, I loved spending time in the old town, checking out the old buildings, of course, some of which are in, in need of uh, heritage assistance, which we hope will happen soon. Um, checking out a lot of the socialist era architecture from the Yugoslav period, which was really interesting interesting to me. Um, and I spent a lot of time outside in the parks and at some of the local archaeological sites as well. But I am a huge foodie, so a lot of my time was spent in their cafes um, and coffee shops and things. Uh, Pristina has an incredibly uh, incredible emerging cafe scene. Um, so I love spending time in the cafes, trying the local food, which is primarily ethnically Albanian. So that was really cool. Um, having drinks with my coworkers. Again, this is Argenda, who is my direct supervisor, um, and she's the architect for council, um, Betim, and the director, Kreshnik. And they had the opportunity to try sushi for the first time while I was there. I uh, basically forced them all to try sushi, a little bit of California I brought, and everyone liked it, so that was really cool. I hope they incorporate that into their lunch schedule. Um, and I also had the opportunity to travel throughout the Balkans, which was really amazing. I spent a lot of weekends in other parts of Kosovo um, and in the neighboring Balkan countries. Some of the highlights for me were uh, hiking in the Rugova Mountains, which was beautiful. I didn't realize how incredible the cultural landscapes are here and the nature. Um, so for those of you hikers, I highly recommend going to Kosovo and hiking up in the Rugova Mountains. It was gorgeous. Um, I went to Gracinica, where there's a Serbian monastery which dates to the 13th century. Um, I got the opportunity to go to KOTOR, which is down here in Montenegro, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which was absolutely gorgeous, um, and to a couple of more archaeological sites as well in North Macedonia and Lake Orid in North Macedonia. So I can't wait to go back to the Balkans and explore all of the countries I didn't make it to. Yeah, Fali Mandarit, thank you um, in Albanian for having me. Uh, the World Heritage IEP internship was one of the most incredible experiences I've had so far in my life, and I'm really grateful as an emerging professional to have had this opportunity, and I'm so grateful to my team for hosting me. I can't wait to go back and spend more time and see how the project has progressed. So thank you so much.